you doing today guys welcome back to another day of seven great math this is mr gomez your favorite teacher in the, whole, in the whole world and today we're going to be using similar shapes to find the missing uh lengths or angles okay so on the previous video that we talked about uh just finding the proportionality of the similar shapes in this case we're going to use that what we know to actually find use proportions to find missing lengths or angles we're going to find the unknown in this case right here find the unknown <laughs> so all of this is pretty nice and uh, pretty know that but where it says if you know that two figures are similar you can use the proportions to find unknown lengths of sides as well as unknown angle measurements and just a little feedback on this anytime you have similar figures it is given understood that the angles of the pro corresponding side are going to be the same the measures the lengths are going to be different but the angles always the same so for instance if i were to do the tick marks to label this this is the small one and the big one this is going to be number one two and three so number one two and three so the lengths are different, but the angles are going to be the same. So for the angles, instead of doing tick marks, I'm gonna do something very similar. So this is gonna be one, two, and three. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the other one. One, two, and three. So with this, I can find the missing angles. For example, X is gonna be corresponding to the 35. So X equals 35 degrees. And if I'm looking for angle B, this one right here is going to be 90. And C is going to be 55. The angles are easy to find on similar shapes. Okay. They're always going to be the same. Now you got to be paying attention just in case they rotate them or flip the figures so that you can identify the, the tick marks. So now. We're going to find the unknown measures. We're going to, they have us uh, to, to set, set up proportions. proportions. This is the same thing I'm doing big and small. And I like to stick with that because I think it's easier. So basically what they're saying over here, what they are saying over here, this is UW. They're making that to be a line. Usually you see a line on top of that or a segment. So basically they're talking about for UW, they're talking about this line right there. For UV, they're talking about this line right there. Okay, that's what they're talking about. And that's the same thing as doing the tick marks. So if I were to do the tick marks on this one, I will do one, two, and three. And I do the same thing to the corresponding uh, figure. This is one, two, and three. Now this is the big one and the small one. So I'm just going to stick to that because I think it's easier, easier for you to understand it. If you set it up like this, you will always get them right. So I'm going to find the missing length. Okay. That's what I'm trying to find in here. I'm trying to find X. There's two ways to do this. One is always going to work. The other one, not always. Okay. So you got to pay attention. And the one that is always going to work is something that you might know as butterfly. Who remembers butterfly or cross products? Who remembers butterfly or cross products? Okay. I know you guys know it. So this is what we're going to do. To find a missing length, since these shapes are similar, they are proportional. You only need to know two things. So even though we label one, two, and three, we only need two. We only need two proportions to find the missing one. And I like to use, of course, you have to use the proportion with the missing one and another one. The other one that I'm going to use is going to be the other small one, okay? The smaller number. So I'm going to do big over small, and I'm going to do one and two because I'm looking for two. Set up my two proportions. 
Now I'm going to look for B1. What is the number for B1? We need to put that number in there. So B1, this is B1 right there. What is that number? 12. What is B2? B2 is 20. Now we go to the other one, to the small one. I have the numbers for the big one on top, the number for the small one on the bottom. And if you label this right here, there's no way of getting this wrong. If you do not label it, you might mismatch them. So it's crucial for you to label it. Okay. Now we're going to look for S1. And if I look for S1, is that one right there, which is 6. And S2, I don't have anything. That's going to be my X. <laughs> so the method that is always going to work is going to be cross products or butterfly. You multiply these two, multiply these two, get the equation, solve for x. So, you're going to have 12x equals 6 times 20 is 120. Now, I have a one-step equation. i got to divide by 12. Why divide by 12? Because it's multiplying both sides. So, x equals to 10. So, that means that this missing length is 10 centimeters. Now, the other way to do this, and you might be able to do this on your head, okay? You can compare this and this, and what happened to them. Now, when I say what happened, when we're talking about proportions and similar figures, scale factors, ratios, we are either multiplying or dividing. We're not adding or subtracting anything. So, between 12 and 6, what happened to that? So if, if you write this, if you look at this proportion right there, what happened between these two? Did it multiply or divide? Anybody? Come on. So I know you can hear me. Basically, you divide by two. So what you do to one, you have to do to the other one to keep it proportional. So you got to divide by two. 20 divided by two is 10 which is the same number that we got over here. Or you can see, you can actually see 12 divided by 2 is 6. 22 divided by 2 is 11. So 20 divided by 2 gives you 10. That easy. Now we're going to do another one. Now for rectangles, you got to pay attention on rectangles. On triangles, most of the time, not always, you have three different lengths. Unless it's an uh, isosceles triangle, these two are the same, but the bottom one is different. Or if you have an equilateral triangle, that means all the sides are the same. So if this is three, then this is three, this is three. And this is five, and this is three, then this is also three. Okay? You gotta know this. <laughs> now for rectangles, well, this is the same as this one, isn't it? So this is also 5, and this is also 15. So you got to pay attention. You got two of the same. That's going to be relevant later on. So now, I label this. This is my small one, my big one. So this is one thick mark, one, two right here, two right here. I'm looking for Y. So again, I'm going to do small over big, one and two. My S1 is 5, my S2 is 15, my B1 is 9, and my B2 is Y. Now, before you do cross products, you can see over here something. What happened between these two? It got bigger, but by how much? So what happened to 5? 5 times what gives you 15? 5 times 3 gives you 15. So if you multiply the bottom times 3, you get 27. So this is 27 meters. Now, if you still don't know how to do this, you can always do butterfly, cross products. So 5 times y is just 5y. 9 times 15 is 135. 
divide by 5, y equals 27 meters. Either way is going to give you the same answer. Now, why I say you cannot always do this quick method? The reason is because sometimes you're going to get decimal and it's going to be a lot harder. So it's easier to do it with the cross product method. Okay? Set up your two proportions, cross products, solve for the value. Okay? Now, what if we're missing a, a, an angle? What if we're missing an angle? So same thing. Remember, the angles are going to be the same. You don't need to do proportions. None of that. Now, you just got to be careful in case they flip or twist the figure or somehow. Okay? So, again, 1, 2, 3. So, this is 1. The next bigger one is this one. And then this one. So with my angles, I'm going to do the same thing. So let's look for the smaller one, which is going to be this one. And then this one. And then this one. Now, let's look at angle F. Angle F is going to be corresponding to the line that intersects between 3 and 2. See how they intersect right there? So it's going to be right there. So K equals 29 degrees. So angle G, you can say, is going to be the line that intersects in 3 and 1, which is going to be this one right there. So this is also 47 and 104. It's that easy. For angles, you don't have to do any math. All you have to do is find it. Now for this one. We're looking for angle S. And notice in this, this is a parallelogram or a, uh, yeah, parallelogram. So the opposites, they're the same. And then these two are the same. Just like when we talk about angles, check that video up there, okay? Just like when we talked about angle, the opposite, like vertical lines, this is the same principle. So this angle is the same as this one. So these two go like that. So my angle S is 122 degrees. Does anybody have any questions so far? All right, that is it for today, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.